Well, hello again. Today we're going to talk about betting systems and taking them to their mathematical limits. Is there a way to create a betting system that might have a 100% hit rate on each spin? Let's take a look together. We're going to start with the Romanowski system. I've discussed this in a previous video, and if you wish, you may take a look at that to refresh your memory on what's going on with the Romanowski system. But to summarize here, and we're going to be looking at a single zero wheel for purposes of the discussion today. And in the Romanowski system, a single zero wheel will have 37 numbers, and we're actually betting on 32 of those numbers. To put that in context, this would be a representation of what a Romanowski bet might, bet might be. In this particular case, we've got a single unit bet on the numbers uh, 2, 3, 5, and 6, a single unit bet on the numbers 8, 9, 11, and 12, and then we've put three units on the second dozen and three units on the third dozen. This is an equivalent bet to what I'm about to show here. And as you can see here, the layout looks a little differently with our wagering on Romanowski. I've multiplied, in fact, all bets by four. So instead of a corner bet of one unit that covers four numbers, I've instead put a single unit on each of the four numbers and another single unit on each of the other four numbers within the first 12. So I've got numbers 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 9, 11, 12, all covered by a single unit. And then for the second dozen and the third dozen, instead of betting three units on each of those, I'm now betting 12 units on each of those. And so instead of a total of eight units, my total wager is 32 units. You can see that mathematically it's equivalent. I've just multiplied every wager by four. And in particular, if I wanted to, I could represent Romanowski this way, where now I've explicitly taken the 12 units on the second dozen and the 12 units on the third dozen and put one unit on each of those elements within the dozens. And you can convince yourself mathematically that what I've done here is fair. If regardless of what number comes up when the wheel spins, um, the outcome is the same as if I had uh, done the previous bet. In other words, this particular wager here, where I've got 12 units on the second dozen and the third dozen, is exactly the same as spreading out the 12 units on each of the 12 numbers. So this is the Romanowski system. And if we go back here, what we find is that the probability of winning is 86%. The probability of losing is 13.5%. This 86.5% is just literally this 32 numbers I've got covered divided by 37. If I win in Romanowski with this wager of 32, I will win a net of four units. And if I lose, I will lose all 32 units. If I do the calculation of an 86.5% chance of winning four, and I add that to a 13.5% chance of losing 32, I'll get a player's expectation of minus 2.70%. And the opposite of that is the house edge of 2.70%, which is the well-known theoretical house advantage in a single zero roulette wheel. So again, the Romanowski system is not a winning system. It does not overcome the house advantage. However, on a spin-by-spin -spin basis, it has a high probability of winning, albeit a small amount, relative to what you're risking. And if I were to do the standard deviation of this system, and if you recall in an earlier video, the standard deviation is really a measure of the scatter or how much distribution I expect in terms of this particular wager. And the standard deviation here is measured in units. So it's plus or minus about 12 units for this particular wager of 32 units. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend Romanowski forward. So here are three additional wagering systems, what I call system U, because the Romanowski starts with R. So I go U, V, and then W for the Wasa Ole system, which is a system that I presented earlier in an earlier video. So in each of these systems, we're going to increase the numbers we're betting by one. So in Romanowski, we're betting on 32 numbers. System U will be 33. System V will be 34 numbers. And the Wasa Ole system, as you know, has a wager on each of 35 numbers. Incidentally, as a reminder, Wasa Ole means win a small amount or lose everything. So as you can see here, the probability of winning, because I'm increasing my bet by one additional number that I'm covering each time, my probability of winning, as you might expect, is going up by 2.7% each time. 
and hence my probability of losing is dropping by 2.7% each time. However, and this is one of the keys, the amount I'm winning is dropping as well. So with the Romanowski system, we saw that if you win, you win plus four units. In system U, you're only now winning plus three units and you're risking 33. In system V, you're winning plus two units and you're risking 34. And in our Wasa Ole system, we're risking 35 units to try to win one. And as a reminder in the Wasa Ole system, the it looks something like this. You're now wagering 35 units, as you can see here. I've got wagers on all of the numbers except number one and number four. So I've wagered on 35 of the 37 numbers. And in Wasa Ole, because I'm doing that, I have a 35 out of 37 chance or a 94.6% chance of winning, but I'm only going to win one unit. And as you can see here, in none of these systems does the house advantage change. But what does change is the standard deviation is getting progressively smaller. My scatter is getting progressively smaller. Let's go ahead and mathematically extend out even further from the Wasa Ole system. And we're going to call this system X. So in system X, I'm betting on 36 numbers. I actually have a 97.3% chance of hitting one of my numbers. But if I hit, a curious thing happens. I now actually win nothing. And that might give you pause saying, well, if I hit a number, how can I win nothing? Well, we do that a lot when we design slot machines. You might wager a dollar, and if you hit three cherries on a you know five by three set of reels, you might get paid 10 credits, or you might get paid 25 credits for the 100 credits that you wagered. And we call that a hit. You hit something, you were paid something, but you were paid an amount less than your wager. And so what happens here is if you hit one of the numbers that you've bet, because you're wagering 36 and it pays 35 to 1, the one that you hit, you'll get paid 35 to 1. But you'll lose the other 35 that missed. And so your net is actually zero. So the best you can do if you wager on 36 separate numbers at once is to end up even. And the worst that you can do is to lose all 36. And you might say, well, Olaf, that's a completely silly system. I would agree with you, but mathematically, it is a system. This particular system actually has a hit rate of 97.3%. Doesn't affect the house advantage, and the standard deviation is smaller still. And you might say to yourself, well, Olaf, can we extend this even one further? And the answer is, you can. Mathematically, you can bet on each of the 37 numbers. And we're starting to get into the realm of silliness here. And let me show you what that looks like. Wasai Ole was here. And this is what it looks like if you bet on each of the 37 numbers. And yes, literally, there's a dollar chip on each of the 37 numbers. And you might say, well, but isn't that kind of silly? Isn't that kind of pointless? Because I'm going to win one for sure, and I'm going to lose the other 36. And you're exactly right. Your hit rate is 100%. You will hit one of your numbers on every spin. There is no chance that you will lose everything. But if you hit, you're going to get paid 35 units on the one that you hit, and you'll lose the other 36. So your net effect is to lose one unit. And that will happen 100% of the time you will lose one unit. So your expectation is to lose one at divided by 37, which is this expectation that we've known all along, minus 2.7%. We've done nothing to modify the house advantage. But a curious thing has happened to our standard deviation. And if you think about it, this makes perfect sense. Mathematically, the standard deviation, if we do the calculation, it says that the answer is zero. There's no deviation. And that's actually true. Because if we wager on each of the 37 numbers, then fully 100% of the time, every time, we will lose exactly one unit, and there's no variation around that. We will lose one unit each and every time with no deviation, no scatter around that. So the standard deviation, in fact, is zero in the system Y. And mathematically, we can actually extend this one step further. Now, logically, in our minds, this makes no sense to us anymore. We cannot wager on more than every number. But in physics and in mathematics, we sometimes do 
crazy things. We, we sometimes extend things beyond what we can even fathom. For example, we, we think of ourselves as living in three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. There's a, there's a if you will, a, a width, a length, and a height. And everything we see exists in these three dimensions. And yet, in physics and in mathematics, we can extend three dimensions to four or more, what we call hyperspace. And we can work in that hyperspace and be completely comfortable in that hyperspace, uh, measuring distances or even measuring volumes, even though it makes no sense to us mentally because we can only think. God has only given us the ability to think, if you will, or to visualize in three dimensions. So in the same way here, we can extend this one more. Even though it makes no sense to us, there is no way for us to bet on 38 numbers if there's only 37 possible numbers. But mathematically, we can just see what happens. And we begin to see that everything starts to explode here. So the probability of winning then becomes over 100%. Our probability of losing becomes negative. And of course, a probability cannot be negative. Everything explodes and the standard deviation, which actually happens to be the square root of a number known as the variance, because the variance in this particular case becomes negative, the standard deviation has no meaning. So in fact, system Z mathematically is not consistent like we would think about a hyperspace. But system Y, where we can get to 100% hit rate, we will lose each and every time and the standard deviation will be zero. So we've taken a look here mathematically at what happens if you extend systems, betting systems. In particular, we've been discussing roulette. And the idea is that you can take a system with a high win rate, and what happens if you try to crank that win rate up even higher? And what we can see is the mathematics ultimately will eventually break down. Again, a short reminder, there is no way to take a betting system on a game that has a built-in house advantage and try to overcome that advantage. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing. I enjoyed making it, and we'll talk again soon. Take care.